I need to ask you guys a question. What do you think is most important when it comes down to choosing the proper scene, setting, location, studio, what have you, for creating YouTube videos, creating content? Now, granted, this may be different depending on who you are and the type of content that you create. For instance, if you are a cooking channel, then odds are you're probably going to want to be in a kitchen or at least somewhere that you have access to what you need to cook. Now, granted, I've seen videos where people actually cook over an open fire or uh, cooking on a grill or some of the uh, bushcraft style cooking, cooking in their van or even cooking in their vehicle that they've outfitted like solar camper. Um. But, for instance, let's just say for vlog or talking head videos or inspirational, motivational, or even news update videos, is there a specific place? Is there a specific look, feel, style that should be pretty much the standard norm if you're going to ultimately be successful in connecting, engaging, reaching an audience, getting impressions and reach suggested by the YouTube algorithm and views, growing a channel. Because I'm, I don't know, have a little bit of a mixed review on that. And the reason being is because I'm starting to see a new trend across YouTube. And this trend is... I'll just sum it up with look poor. And so I'm seeing a lot of YouTube videos popping up of how I look poor or why I look poor or you should look poor or benefits of looking poor. And in fact, they are not poor by definition. They are more than likely doing okay. Potentially middle class, upper middle class, possibly even, dare I say it, rich. But it's all part of a game, right? And I'm going to adjust my audio here because I just realized my game was at 11 plus. So hopefully it wasn't clipping on you guys. I had it amped up for Ecamm. For some reason, Ecamm's volume input's low. Uh, side note, today is our 15 year anniversary. So it's been 15 years and uh, we're actually gonna spend the day hanging out with some friends on a boat today. And um, then we're gonna do a live stream later, another sunset live stream. So looking forward to that. Um, we did not end up renewing our vows on the 15 year anniversary, but uh, that doesn't mean that we won't. And it uh, doesn't mean that it has to happen on a 15-year anniversary. So anything could happen. Anytime, anyplace, anywhere. We definitely live a more spontaneous life than most, more than I would assume, probably. But uh, I've got this question. It's like, all right, so if you're going to create content and, for instance, you're going to make content around the topic of discussion being finances, money, wealth, savings, investing, retirement, side hustles, business, small business, entrepreneurialism, online businesses, passive income, investing, crypto, real estate, whatever. If you're gonna make these videos, right? What should you look like? Should you look poor? Because the conundrum is will people, viewers, potentially be more likely to receive your message and be interested in your message based on you looking poor, or would they reject what you have to say because you don't present a visual appearance of success, theoretically. Um, but then also, this is based on a title and thumbnail because before they even see if you look poor or not, did you show yourself in the type in the thumbnail to make them want to click now on the flip side if you're creating content 
specifically for a particular audience of an affluent, more affluent niche, higher income spending earners, whatever you want to call it, perhaps maybe interested in multi-million dollar yachts or private jets or exotic luxury cars or uh, expensive real estate, uh, world travel, cuisine, expensive things, right? Well, in that sense, if you look poor, will they reject you? Because you don't necessarily align with the mold of the topic. And I'm always wondering, like, does it really matter? Okay. And the reason why I think it might is for the fact that if you were to appear poor, theoretically, not my words. These are theirs. These are, if you you've probably seen these these videos, titles and thumbnails floating around here recently. Look poor. Their words, not mine. Are you more likely to be accepted by the majority of viewers on the platform because they too are in essence poor? So you relate. You speak the same language. You're in the same club whereas they would reject the uh, rich person theoretically seeming rich looking rich person explaining to poor people how to do better how to improve how to make money how to save how to invest how to build wealth I don't know I don't know um, and is it even related to connecting on that level or is it more so more intriguing and creates greater interest from the viewer to see someone who's poor who could potentially theoretically actually be worse off than them so then it comes into the negative side of why anyone would want to watch a video for instance why would anyone want to watch a video full of a compilation of train wrecks because they're bad because they're destructive because they're life ending in some instances and people enjoy that people enjoy that tragedy that sorrow that pain that destruction so um i don't know now granted in the real world looking poor could have its advantages from a safety aspect. You know, you'll be less likely to be a target. But I think also it depends on the area that you decide to put yourself in. And looking poor in Beverly Hills could be completely different than looking poor in the Bronx, you know. Which even now, Bronx, Brooklyn, Harlem, everything's changing. Gentrification is real. So poor is going to be relative. But I will say that when it comes to YouTube, YouTube is a platform theoretically designed behind and around and for entertainment. So you never really truly can believe anything you see or hear on the platform because it could be a script. It could be an act. It could be a set. It could be a studio. It could be a green screen. It could be AI. It could be, you know, uh, CGI. It could be augmented reality. It could be so many things that aren't necessarily truly real, all for the purpose of entertainment. Um, prank videos, you know, husband and wife, family prank videos. Most of those, most of those are not real. They're staged. They probably have to try and do them multiple times to get them right, which means there's a lot of cleanup in between with some of these pranks that they're doing now. But they're designed to somewhat feel real, but more so entertain, and they're not real. Like reality TV shows aren't real. 
the people, the cast, the members, the people, you know, actors, actresses are, in fact, human beings, I think. But the producers will decide what happens to be real on that episode, how they choose to spin it, edit the situation or what they choose to introduce into the mix to stir things up a little bit. And uh, so sometimes you got to think that, okay, I'm watching someone on YouTube and they appear to be poor only because they've chosen to appear to be poor to connect and relate to other poor people who are actually poor, even though they're not, to gain the views, talking about a topic and discussion that will purely just entertain them and more than likely not provoke them to take action all the while the person who's pretending to look poor to entertain on the platform is continuously making more and more money every single video that they upload what do you guys think do you think that your image matters do you think that you should look apart for what your topic of your channel is your overall channel theme for instance, if I wanted to be my channel, this channel here, Kevin247, to be all about YouTube, content creation, strategy, tips, how-tos, theories and philosophies behind the algorithm and the audience and trends that are changing, channel growth, subscriber growth, success, revenue, ads, Sponsorships, brand deals, affiliates, everything. Memberships, super chat, super thanks, live streams, shorts, community posts, podcasts. If I wanted to be that, does that mean that I should have a set studio with um, ambient lighting and the greatest microphone known to man and a Sony A7S III with an amazing lens and uh, tons of B-roll and edits and sound effects and every, the whole nine. And then I should have my name and lights behind me somewhere, maybe a, uh, a green grass wall, um, my YouTube plaques back there. And then how should I dress? You know, it's like, is that it? Or can I still be the same channel? Can I still be the same person? Can I still bring you the same content and value and information sharing this with you all from literally sitting here on my balcony at my apartment does it matter i know for some it doesn't because they don't even watch the videos they only listen as a podcast style format so that takes everything and just completely changes it turns it upside down but for those who do still watch videos, as I know some people choose to watch these videos on their TV, um, which then makes me want to record more in 4K for your benefit. Uh, but at the uh, uh, sacrifice of my storage space, hard drive space, computer processing and video export and upload time processing for YouTube, um, then the visual will matter more. But is it the visual that I'm there? I'm here. We're having this conversation, you and I, face-to-face, one-on-one, this little gnat flying around in front of me. Or is it more of, what is your setting? Where are you? Does it give me, the viewer, a higher comfort level that I can trust you? I can believe what you're saying or just purely that it's more entertaining. Are there distractions behind you? Uh, is there movement? Are there people back there? Is, is there is there is there a constant or sporadic change uh, naturally and organically in the video because of your setting? What is it? Or is it because you look to be in an expensive location, luxury, exuding luxury or you look to be in your car or, you know, uh, somewhere that doesn't scream wealth, money, 
you're better than me. Which I'm not saying that I am, I'm just asking. Psychologically, what are the impacts and changes to the video, the creator, the success of the video, the interest of the audience based on the appearance versus the actual topic of discussion? Because I've come across many, many videos that have plenty of appearance and no substance. And they tend to work out pretty well, I think, um, because people are distracted more so. Um, but I've also seen a lot of people record in their cars and do relatively well there, too. But I think that's more about the conversation and the substance and the value in the conversation and what is being shared. But also because a car for creators is a comfortable place. Uh, lighting is typically pretty good. The acoustics work out well. And you don't have to worry about anybody like sneaking up on you or interrupting you or anything like that. So I know cars are a favorite. Cars, cars is like the go-to studio for a lot of folks. Um, but again, like I said, certain content requires certain locations, um, which have actually been challenged to create content about certain themes without actually being there to see if you can actually just talk about uh, topics of interest that uh, large groups of people, you know, care about, for instance, cars, without ever actually showing any cars in your video or food or travel or business or real estate or investing or YouTube content creation and strategy or whatever it may be. Can you get away with can you gain an audience? Can your videos perform and do well without actually showing anyone anything that would represent what you're talking about, but literally using your words and your experience and your brain and your knowledge and your vocabulary and having a conversation to connect people in a way with a topic that interests them that doesn't rely on any visual whatsoever? And then it wouldn't matter if you look poor, it wouldn't matter if you look rich, it wouldn't matter if you look like you're in the destination or location or if you, anything wouldn't matter. For instance, there was actually a creator who did really, really well for himself. Now granted, he did wear, he did wear a button up shirt and a tie in every video, if not every video, 99.9% .9 of his videos. But he was always up against eventually a white wall there was nothing besides him and and the information he had to bring to you but he also brought it to you wearing a button-up shirt and a tie and i know that that changes things for some does it change it for the algorithm but technically the algorithm algorithm is the people the algorithm is the audience so i don't know like how about this does it change something for this video if this entire conversation was had without me wearing sunglasses? Does it change anything if this entire video was indoors and I was wearing sunglasses? And then you're saying to yourself, well, why are you wearing sunglasses indoors? I can't trust you. Does it change anything that these sunglasses actually happen to have a mirrored tinted lens? opposed to just a dark gray smoke lens but now this adds to the video because you're wondering what is the reflection in the sunglasses lens on these costa rincons i'm curious i want to know what you guys think now for me it all depends it depends on the video it depends on the discussion the topic the reason why i clicked on it and for instance, I really like Haggerty and I really, really like Jason Camisa's videos with Randy Pope's. And if it weren't the two of them doing what they do with the cars, I may not be as interested. However, on the flip side, uh, I used to watch Vin Wiki a lot and Ed Bolian could literally keep me entertained for hours by sitting in a chair and just telling me stories about cars. But again, that's how his channel started. So there was no change. That was the constant. 
and I accepted that from the beginning. And then if he were to change and start introducing more vehicles and more footage and more B-roll, I don't know if I would feel the same about it. Whereas if Haggerty were to do the opposite and just have Jason Camisa and Randy Pope sitting there talking, maybe I wouldn't find them as interesting as I did Ed Bolian. It's crazy how this thing works or doesn't. But what do you guys think? Let me know. Does it even matter? Does it even really matter? Because I even came across a video this morning of somebody who explained their journey and how they were able to gain 60,000 subscribers in 45 days. They went from 5,000 subscribers to 65,000 subscribers in 45 days. And ultimately, what they described, what they explained throughout this video was they have no idea how it happened. No clue. None whatsoever. And the reason being is because what got it going, what lit the fire and got it started was from a video that was created mm, almost five months ago. A video that seemingly five months ago was not going to light the world on fire in terms of views, reach, impressions, subscriber count, growth, this, that, and the other. And then five months later, it blows up. Did you have any control over that? Probably not. Did it matter what you looked like in that video? I don't know. But at the end of the day, the algorithm decided, hey, this is one of those old videos we're going to put out and we're going to put it out so many different times to so many different people that eventually a lot of people are going to watch it no matter what. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do to make it happen. There's nothing you can do to stop it from happening unless you just stop creating content. And at the end of the day, what it boils down to is YouTube holds all the cards. YouTube is in control of the algorithm. YouTube decides, you know, gladiator, they decide, you know. And uh, from there, the audience will form an opinion. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think?